Sarah Ann has always been known as a very tender boat. To put it another way, she sailed on her ear, but she'd never been properly ballasted. So I set about trying to get her properly ballasted with the right amount of lead in the right place. Every time you take your boat out, you're going to find a number of little things that need tweaking in this. Not such a small thing. She needed a lot more ballast. So I was able to beg, borrow and steal enough lead to give me about 160 kilos. But of course it all needed smelting and that was something I'd never done before. You can see there all the dross that comes from the paint. Some of the uh, ingots are quite clean, but those ones with the paint, they came out of a mate's Ross 780. I think the trickiest part of creating this setup was creating a stop valve that you could actually open and shut the lead pour um, at, as, uh, as needed. And I did this by putting a nut and welding it on an offset, putting a bolt through it and then taping her in the end of the bolt. And that enabled me to get a shifter onto that and tighten it up um, or loosen it depending on whether you want the lead to flow. It's a very satisfying thing to do. And uh, we had to tinker around quite a bit. The first setup we used uh, an incinerator and uh, couldn't get enough heat into it. So in the end I used my old uh, childhood steam engine experience of lighting a fire around the boiler to get it all up so it started to pour. You get a fair bit of fluffy stuff comes through. Uh, I learnt in the process of doing this that you should re scrape that off. Um, but you can hit it with a hammer afterwards and it flattens down nicely. The way we were set up here, it was definitely a two-person job to keep it all under control. found that um, this is a big section of angle iron that we're using to create the forms. And um, the, the dividers that separate each of the bricks were more or less up and down. So they were not 90 degrees exactly and that made it a bit difficult to get the ingots out. If I was doing it again, I'd put a bit of steel on the ground and create a bit of a track so that I could slide the forms along without spilling the ingots. The lead that we used was a combination of hard lead and soft lead. Now, what I mean by hard lead, um, I'm pretty sure that it's created by putting antimony in the lead to give it a bit more resilience. But we had a combination of the two, so it would have just diluted the antimony. And um, because of where it is, it's not on the bottom of a keel and uh, so it's not going to get any direct wear. It doesn't take long for you to become bored with the pace of things. You can see our first attempt there on the left, second attempt and then accelerating it using the blower and putting some guarding around the outside to keep the heat in and it did ramp up the speed quite nicely. The end of result of our hard day's labour was 11 ingots each weighing 10 kilograms so 110 and um, that was to be added to what was already in the boat giving me 160 kilos in total. And watching this just now, I know why it is that I'm so sore in the pecs today. There is a little bit of anxiety as I lift these um, ingots into place, because if I was to drop one, it would go straight through the bottom of the boat. In the same way, if they're not secured properly, properly in place and we get knocked down, then they may well fall out and go straight through the, the side of the boat. So these 
ingots are about 10 kilos each and I want to get them bearing evenly on the surface here uh, most of the weight is to be taken here on the keel I've cut this bit of soft neoprene rubber and it'll fit into this quite nicely unfortunately I cut it just one row too wide so that's they're very grippy so the idea is I'll put the first one in lengthwise so it's sitting it just just sits there on the end of the um, stem post there the knee inside the stem post and that looks pretty good I'm happy with that So that's bearing nicely against here. I don't really want to put another one out here because it's too much weight. I did toy with the idea of melting down the weights off my weight belt, but I thought, well, as soon as I do that, I'm going to probably get myself a big, thicker wetsuit sometime and I'm probably going to need them. So instead, I'll just store them in this uh, same compartment as the ballast. I tied each section of ballast up with cable ties and wrapped it up in that rubber so that it can't separate and move independently but I'm going to put some wooden cleats on top so now let's just put the bedding in. Up until now I've been putting out a weekly sailing cruising video which included a little section on restoration of Sarah Ann but I'm going to mix that up a bit from now on. I'm going to take the restoration bit out and midweek I'm going to be posting a um, hints and tips and wooden boat restoration segment and then um, at the weekend I'm going to post a sailing segment so if doing up boats is your thing you can watch the weekday one but if um, sailing and cruising is your thing you can watch the weekend one or if you like doing both those things just watch both so what's the result of all that hard work is she any stiffer and does she sit on her waterline now well, the answers are a resounding yes. I've just had her down at Coles Bay for a few days in very gusty conditions. And you'll be able to watch part one of that trip at the weekend. I'd be interested in your thoughts. If you're into sailing, how much time do you spend maintaining and restoring your boat? And how much time do you spend actually sailing? Let me know in the comments below. Mm -hmm.